Corruption has a corrosive impact on growth and business operations. It affects inequality and income distribution and also affects the overall governance and business environment. This is why we all have to join hands together to see it brought to its barest minimum. And as the EFCC chairman has always advocated, you do your part and we do ours and together we will have a better Nigeria. Welcome to another episode of The Eagle. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Thank you for joining us on the program. Hello there. The fight against corruption involves you and I. I will play my part and you will play yours. Join me, Abdul Rashid Bawa, Executive Chairman, Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, on the Together Against Corruption Challenge and lend your voice to the fight against economic and financial crimes always. Thank you. The fight against corruption is a collective one. And as such, collaboration is needed as a very important part of achieving the EFCC mandate, which is to bring corruption and economic and financial crimes to its barest minimum, if not totally eradicated. In this report, we'll bring you updates of some collaborative efforts the Commission is having with some agencies in achieving its mandate. But before this, Aisha Gambari tells us more about this and another report. Over to you, Aisha. Nigeria has called for the simplification of evidentiary requirements and other mutual legal assistance procedures to enhance international cooperation and facilitate timely recovery and return of stolen assets. This position was presented by Abdul Rashid Bawa, Executive Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, while presenting Nigeria's statement at the United Nations General Assembly Special Session on Corruption in New York, United States of America. Bauer said measures must be introduced to mitigate the continuous flow of illicit funds from least developed to developed countries, adding the state parties must continue to commit the timely return of illicit assets and ensure implementation of effective anti-money laundering measures by international financial centers. The fight against illicit financial flaws is urgent and important in our collective efforts to address corruption. We remain committed to our efforts to track, investigate, prosecute corrupt individuals and entities and repatriate such funds and assets to their countries of origin. Nigeria looks forward to the full implementation of all the commitments expressed in the political declaration, particularly on asset recovery and return to support the development financing as well as implementation of the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. The declaration which were agreed upon in advance through intergovernmental negotiation by state parties to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, ONCA, covers the thematic areas of prevention, criminalization and law enforcement, assets recovery and international cooperation, as well as cross-cutting issues like education and research, amongst others. Nigeria has participated in the first and second review cycles of United Nations Convention Against Corruption, implementing review processes as a reviewing and reviewed state. It has enacted a mutual legal assistance law in line with the recommendation of the review process. Recently, the Parliament launched the 2021 Legislative anti-corruption agenda, which seeks to provide a clear roadmap for a reform-based legislative intervention to prevent and combat corruption and financial crimes in Nigeria. Some of the bills before the parliament include the Witness Protection Bill, the Proceeds of Crime Bill, and the Public Interest Disclosure and Complaint Commission Bill. Mr. President, the systemic imbalances and institutional deficiencies in the global tax treaties and structures frame when most developing countries were under foreign rule in many respects continue to occur and give rise to a tax regime that is unsuited of the current era. 
and thus hindering effective measures at combating tax abuses, especially by multinational cooperation. Mr. President, now more than ever, governments at all levels must rise to their responsibility and continue to commit to transparency and accountability in public expenditure. Bauer Forder said that Nigeria acknowledges the very beneficial use of settlements and non-trial resolutions to ensure the disgorgement of illicit gains from corrupt acts. He called on jurisdictions negotiating settlements to inform affected jurisdictions that a negotiation towards a settlement is taking place and proactively share information on concluded settlements. Measures must be introduced to mitigate the continuous flow of illicit funds from least developed to developed countries in the world. State parties must continue to commit to the timely return of illicit assets and ensure implementation of effective anti-money laundering measures by international financial centers. Nigeria further highlights the beneficial use of settlements and non-trial resolutions to ensure the disgorgement of illicit gains from corrupt acts. It calls on jurisdictions negotiating settlements to, in a timely manner, inform affected jurisdictions that a negotiation towards a settlement is taking place and proactively share information on concluded settlements. We are pleased that the ONGA's political declaration reiterate previous resolutions on settlements and urge states to fully cooperate in this regard. The EFCC chair underlined the threats which corruption poses to the world, among which is the huge negative impacts on the stability, peace and economic prospects of millions, particularly in developing countries. He however noted that Nigeria, under the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari, has been upfront in its commitment to fighting corruption as the government developed a national anti-corruption strategy as a framework for preventive and law enforcement engagement and introduce measures to mitigate revenue leakage, including a whistleblower policy which led to the recovery of 43 million US dollars. Nigeria, like many other countries, has suffered from the damaging effect of corruption. The country has lost billions of dollars to foreign tax havens, stolen and expatriated by corrupt leaders and their foreign accomplices including multinational companies. However, since the return of democracy in 1999, Nigeria has prioritized the fight against corruption and established anti-corruption agencies such as the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, and the Code of Conduct Bureau to lead the fight against corruption. Nigeria, under the leadership of His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, has made the fight against corruption one of the cardinal objectives of the administration. Under his leadership, civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations and whistleblowers are encouraged to join the fight against corruption and contribute their quota in this regard. One instance of such whistleblowing led to the recovery of over 43 million United States dollars in 2017. Public corruption is being exposed by the day and several politically exposed persons have been and are being prosecuted and divested of their uh, illicit assets. We have been engaging with international law enforcement agencies across the world and some of the collaboration has led to the recovery and repatriation of stolen funds, including the recent return of 4.2 million pounds by the UK government that was stolen from Nigeria by a former governor. He also highlighted Nigeria's efforts in strengthening the legislative framework for anti-corruption in the country, including the launch of the 2021 Legislative Anti-Corruption Agenda, which seeks to provide a clear roadmap for a reform-based legislative intervention to prevent and combat corruption and financial crimes in Nigeria. Procurement processes in Nigeria have been strengthened and activities of the gatekeepers are being monitored through the Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering to serve as deterrence to the stealing of the public funds in the country. Policies have been introduced to mitigate revenue leakages, including the development of National Anti-Corruption Strategy, NACS, 
The NACS is developed with five identified cardinal pillars on prevention, public engagement, ethical reorientation, enforcement and sanctions, and recovery and management of stolen assets. The strategy is aimed at providing a national roadmap in the fight against corruption. Nigeria has sustained her commitment to the social reuse of recovered assets, as demonstrated in the funding of major infrastructural projects and other social initiatives consisting of cash transfers to the most vulnerable groups in the country. In concluding his position to the special session, Bawa said Nigeria looks forward to the full implementation of all the commitments expressed in the political declaration, particularly on asset recovery and return, to support development financing as well as the implementation of the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. Mr. President, Nigeria therefore calls a multifaceted approach in addressing illicit financial flows as recommended by the high-level panel report on international financial accountability transparency and integrity for achieving the 2030 agenda. The report provides path to financial integrity for sustainable development, strongly showing how to redirect the resources lost from illicit flows to finance implementation of the 2030 agenda and the achievement of the SDGs. Nigeria further calls for the simplification of evidentiary requirements and other mutual legal assistance procedures to seize, confiscate, repatriate proceeds of corruption as appropriate to enhance international cooperation for timely recovery of return assets. The special session which opened on June 2, 2021 was designed to examine measures to prevent and combat corruption and strengthen international cooperation pursuant to the United Nations General Resolution 73-191 and 74276, as well as decision 74568, including the adoption of a set of action oriented political declaration on corruption. Apart from representing Nigeria's statement, the EFCC bus also participated in a number of side events, most of which held virtually. Aisha Gambari reporting for the Eagle. The Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, have resolved to strengthen their collaboration in tackling corruption in the financial sector. Speaking during a Katsi visit to the EFCC headquarters in Abuja, the chairman of the CIBN, Bayo Ulubemi, stated that there was need to intensify collaboration and sought the support of the EFCC in sanitizing the financial sector. He also requested the EFCC's assistance in training and certification that will assist the Institute in dealing with emerging challenges. The CIBN mooted the idea of having a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, which will moderate the activities of the two organizations. In his remarks, the EFCC Director of Operations, Abdul Karim Chuko, who stood in for the Executive Chairman of the Commission, Abdul Rashid Bauer, appreciated the team for their visit, stating that the EFCC was ready to collaborate with stakeholders in enhancing the fight against corruption in Nigeria. Chukal said the EFCC alone cannot win the war, as it is a collective responsibility of everyone to do so. The head of the Lagos Zonal Office of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Hamid Ghali, has called on critical stakeholders in the anti-graft war to join hands with the Commission in tackling the menace of computer-related fraud in the country. He made the appeal in Lagos during an engagement with critical stakeholders from the civil society organizations, non-governmental organizations and the media. Gali said the engagement with the stakeholders was a fallout of the increasing spate of cybercrime in the country. He stressed that there is an urgent need to reach out to critical stakeholders in the society on the growing issue of internet fraud in Nigeria because computer-related frauds have taken a very dangerous dimension with its attendant consequences. He further stated that the EFCC needed the support of all to sustain the anti-graft fight in the country. 
Speaking during the event, a member of the Center for Public Accountability, Olufemi Lawson, called for corruption prevention actions aimed at catching them young, while a representative from the Impact Africa Initiative, Latifa Abdesalam, pointed out that parenting is a big deal and definitely needs catching them young to avoid breeding bad eggs into the society. Representing AML and CFT CSO Forum, Efi Anahoge said there was a need for Nigerians to own the war against corruption and comrade Declan Ihehari, a member of the activists for good governance, gave assurance that the CSOs and the NGOs were ready to partner with the commission in achieving its mission. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abdurashid Ba, has described as alarming the rate of procurement frauds in public service in Nigeria. He stated this in his goodwill message at the opening ceremony of the year 2021 First Bad Conversion Training Program to Procurement Cadre for Federal Parastatals and Agencies, organized by the Bureau of Public Procurement at the Digital Bridge Institute, Osho de Lagos. Aisha Gambari again tells us more. Bawa, who was represented by head Lagos Zonal Office of the EFCC, Mohammed Ahmed Ghali, added that many procurement professionals in federal institutions were not aware of the potholes that must be avoided in the discharge of their duties. He therefore lauded the organization for the training, stating that when public officers are rightly informed or armed with the prerequisite knowledge to enhance their performances on their jobs, the likelihood of getting involved in fraudulent acts or corrupt practices will be minimal and the society will be the greatest beneficiary. One of the major ways that uh, government are having leakages is at the point of procurement. So we have our government officials conversant of how to block that uh, leakages and uh, how to be careful and go about the potholes in the process of procurement will definitely save a lot when it comes to corruption, corruption corrupt practices in public procurement and also government will have value for the money she is spending to procure and other services. He further described the BPP as an ally in the anti-corruption war and that the procurement fraud section of the EFCC was established to check procurement fraud in the public sector and urged the participants to take maximum advantage of the training so as to be better procurement officers. According to Wikipedia, forgery is a white-collar crime that generally refers to the false making or material alteration of a legal instrument with the specific intent to defraud anyone other than themselves. Forgery involves a false document, signature, or other imitation of an object or value used with the intent to deceive another. And those who commit forgery are often charged with the crime of fraud. Documents that can be the object of forgery include contracts, identification cards, and legal certificates. The Eagle crew had a one-on-one -on -one chat with the head Foreign Exchange Malpractice Section of the EFCC, Hawaringim, who gave an insight into forgery fraud and its consequences. Enjoy. According to Section 465 of the Criminal Code Act, it defines sub forgery as a person who makes a false document in writing knowing it to be false with the intent that it may be used as genuine to the prejudice of another person in a state or elsewhere is said to have committed um, forgery or with an intent try to convince another person to act on a document knowing fully well that that document is forged that person is said to have committed, um, said to have forged a document or writing. Forgery can also be faking of someone else's signature without um, permission. It can also be making a false document or an object or changing an existing document or an object without authorization. The most common type of forgery is um, um, forging someone else's signature on a check. But other things can also be forged, like object, data, 
wills, historical papers, diplomas, licenses. All those things can also be forged. Currency and um, consumer goods can also be forged, but that is called counterfeiting. We have classification of um, forgery. We have um, false writing. For a writing to qualify as forgery, that writing must have legal significance and it must be false. What do I mean by legal significance? That document must be government issued. Example, we have um, driver's license, passport, identification cards. Then it must be transactional document, that is to qualify a writing as a forgery. Financial transactional documents such as deeds, receipts, and um, grants. Then we have financial instrument such as checks, stocks, certificates. Other documents such as wills, prescription, tokens, and artworks can also be, be forged. As I said, under the common law, forgery was limited to um, altering or falsifying of writing. But modern law includes passing and using of documents. Knowing fully well that that document you are using or you are passing is a forged document. It's also called altering. For example, somebody use a fake driver's license to buy stuffs in a supermarket. You see, that person is not the originator of that driver's license, but for the fact that he knew that that license was fake and he used it for his own advantage, he has committed altering. Um, implication of forgery in the Nigerian economy. Forgery, not even forgery, forgery in whatever form or any other form economy of economic and financial crime has a potentially devastating effect on the Nigerian economy, on Nigerian security, and by extension, the social well-being of Nigerians. So the implication of forgery, I said, it has very devastating effect, for example, on the bank and its customers. A person goes and forged a customer's um, signature in the bank, because I said earlier, the common type of signature is signature on checks. You forge somebody else's signature on a check, you go to the bank, you cash out the money. Definitely, it will be so devastating on the customer and the bank itself. The credibility of the bank will reduce in the eyes of the customer. Then, gov government revenue reduces. You see, F for example, people go to forge um, stamp duty, they, form, they forge receipt, they force, uh, forge revenue receipts. That revenue ought to have gone to the government, but somebody else has gone to forge those receipts. So those revenues instead of going to the government, go to private uh, pockets. There, thereby, we we'll have infrastructure deficits. For instance, um, section 467 of the Criminal Code Act stipulates um, penalty for forgery. Um, it says um, when a person forges any document, writing or seal is guilty of an offense, that is, he's guilty of felony, if there is no any other punishment provided, which is like three years imprisonment. But the offense, the punishment might differ depending on the actual place that offense was committed. If it's committed in, in, in let's say in Abuja, it might be three years. If it's committed somewhere else, the offense and the punishment might differ. Then the same sections talk about forgery of public seal. The same section, 467, talks about forgery of public seal. When you forge a public seal, the punishment is conviction to life imprisonment. When a person forges an item like register, security, title, or anything related to revenue, he's liable to 14 years imprisonment. So then forgery of court records, evidences, seals, process of court, fetches a conviction of not less than 
seven years imprisonment. Those are basically a punishment and um, um, penalty for uh, forgery. Say no to forgery before you are caught. Say no to economic and financial crimes before you are caught because imbibe, try to imbibe the spirit of hard work and integrity. EFCC is watching you. Thank you. Well, you all heard the head foreign exchange malpractice session of the EFCC, Hawa Ringrim, as she reiterates the need for collective effort to fight forgery in this country and that the EFCC has been collaborating with other law enforcement agencies to make sure forgery cases are minimized. And that's how we wrap up today's episode of The Eagle. You can kindly send your inquiries and suggestions on anything about the EFCC to the eagle at efccnigeria.org. You can also search and follow us on all our social media platforms at official EFCC. And before I leave as usual, here are some parting words from former South African President Nelson Mandela who said, and I quote, the first thing is to be honest with yourself. You can never make an impact on society if you have not changed yourself. Great peacemakers are all people of integrity, of honesty, but humility. Do the right thing always. See something, say something, and sure, as usual, the EFCC will do something about it. My name is Aisha Mohammed. From all of us here, it's goodbye. God bless Nigeria. And please be kind to one another.